Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to tackle just two topics and those would be engineering and engineers. So let's get right into it. If you caught the last little dev update you are pretty aware of what we are aiming to do in this big update and the first part of it is the engineering side of things and um, well, this down here, all you know, uh, is all you know, and at the end here, there is a missing underscore heading underscore engineering uh, thing. And we are going to take a look at that. This is very preliminary UI, and it is but ugly and not quite functional yet, but you will get the gist of it. All right, let's take a look. So, this is the first engineering tab for you to explore and in this tab you assemble your uh, team of engineers you have a team lead and the junior lead and then up to three lead engineers which are working on the project with their respective junior if you choose so these will be characters that age over the course of the game and uh, eventually retire and they have skills and they have experience and levels and all kinds of good RPG stuff. We are going to take a closer look at them in the next topic and that would be uh, the engineers. But first let's take a look at what other things you have here. So in this case I am, I am making a car which has the platform name Family Sport. Uh, very creative Mr. Kirob. And it has three trims, the premium, the basic and the standard. And so now let's see what you can do with this. The calculations are already in, so we focused more on the actual implementation than uh, the looks of it right now. But it should be reasonably functional, apart from this section which isn't working yet. Um, Alright, so the premium trim. First of all, you will have to decide the overall funding and well, efficiency is a bad word, but let me explain later. Uh, the overall funding for your team. And you can see the numbers are changing. It becomes more costly to um, engineer with maximum funding. It gets a bit faster though, not that much faster, but um, yeah, a reasonable amount. But what you don't see yet is that your engineers will be happier. And if you have real divas in your team who are like, oh, I'm a star engineer, I want to have only the best, then you will have to amp up the team funding slider if you put that engineer on. Otherwise. The diva will kind of get sour and potentially quit, which you may not want. So, uh, after you've decided the overall funding for your project, you can decide the efficiency of uh, the project. Let me explain what that means. So, uh, efficiency 100 means you tell your engineers, do that and only that as fast as possible. No playing around, no checking out alternative solutions just do it you can do it just do it and if you have it at maximum that will mean that um, your junior engineers will not learn that much because they basically get, get told you do that and ask no questions and if you put it down here you see time increases and the cost increase a lot and that gives your engineers a lot of headroom to play around, try new things out, teach the new guys and in general just give and get more experience out of the project. But it takes longer which is potentially bad for your company but may be good for your future engineers. So yeah, it's, it's a trade-off really. Also this will, I mean, man children playing around uh, in the lab and testing out building engines and cars that sounds like a lot of fun and that is what slider zero would be about um, so they will probably be pretty happy with that anyway so let's see what what happens here uh, the third slider is trim specific as well as this type selection so your family sport car you can see here you can select this for the model itself 
Um, no reliability slider or type slider for that. But let's say your premium model is supposed to be limited production and you can set that here. It turns the flag to limited. It reduces the um, time required a little bit because you don't have to invest so much time into working out how the tooling for this will work and so on. So you save a little bit of time, but this will mean that you can only build a certain number of cars. Like you, you limit your product, total production to a thousand cars, not per something, but just plain 1000 cars or whatever you choose. You can choose that in the later factory tab then once that model is handed on to that tab. If you choose full production, then you have no limitations there. If you choose concept, that car will only ever be produced three times and you will gain a bit of experience. You will be able to use it for marketing, but you can't sell it. So full production is your normal way to go. And you can see uh, things change um, if you change the type and a, a full production car always will cost the maximum. So if you drop it to concept, obviously you don't really have to invest that much time into it. Like half-baked is fully viable if we're for a concept car. No one will drive it anyway. Otherwise it will be a prototype of a production car, right? So there are several advantages to making concept cars, of course, and those advantages will be just in real life. You get some exposure for your, for your brand and like this model, having a concept, uh, a higher level concept will be beneficial to the overall, um, like if you make it really sporty, then that sportiness of this trim, which just is a concept, will benefit the image of the other two cars. But that is something we have to take a look at later with marketing and stuff. Anyway, um, so your basic and standard trim can of course also be concepts, but that doesn't make much sense. Also you can see in concept, you can't choose the reliability of the car because no one will ever drive it anyway. So um, let's take the standard car and now see what happens to uh, the car and the time with the reliability slider. It takes a lot of time to make something reliable and there's still a field missing here. There would be shown what current reliability the car has and how it is affected by the slider. And if you really need to rush out a car and you don't have much, uh, much time on your hand, you might be able to reduce the time, waiting time quite a bit by uh, just lowering the reliability. Might take a hit for your company uh, reputation though. So, um, what do we have on this side of things? I think this is now reasonably clear what it is. There's still some things missing, like a status flag of the different um, of the different trims, like if it's in production already, if it's uh, fully engineered, or if it's just in design, and so on. All right, but what do we see here? Well, this is a listing of the uh, different tabs in the game for the car, and how much engineering time you incur from those. This is still not complete, obviously. Uh, body and fixtures are missing. And also the cost from individual trims here is, adding trims is not added to the total yet. There needs to be a flat cost per trim. Um, but yeah, so you have a breakdown here of your individual times you invest into engineering. And then there will be a column here for the quality selection you have, which massively affects the engineering time it takes. Then you have a column for your engineer skill here, which will offset the quality you have chosen there. And that is only an offset in engineering time. So let's say you have chosen an, an, a quality of plus five, and you have an engineer which has a skill of plus three in that tab. And that would mean that uh, the five minus three equ equates basically two. So the engineering time will be equal to that of a slider, quality slider setting of two instead of five. Then you also have a familiarity slider. I hate that word, it's so difficult to say. Um, yeah, so that will be the more your company engineers something, the easier it will get after that to engineer. So if you engineer something three times, you may get a bonus of like 
um, off the price of engineering time next time. If you engineer 50 times, you may be getting a 60% um, rebate. And that means uh, you have full control over these things here. Uh, you see which tab to go back to to fix some errors. For example, this entertainment section looks really pricey. Anyway, so this is on there. And now let's take a look what you, more you can do here. So we changed a bit of reliability here and there. And as you can see, these individual times added up don't give you this time down here. And that is because um, there are synergies between these. They are not all extremely different, but basically they are the same car with a few changes. And of course you don't have to engineer things twice. So this number is taking into account all the synergies between the cars, the common selections. And so this means that if you have no premium variant, you have 287 um, man months, so to say, done here of engineering. You get the little x and time is zero. But you don't save the full amount of time from just that. If you put it into concept, 313. If you put it into limited, 362 and 4, 384. As you can see, you can then choose like, ah, you have designed so many, so many trims, but maybe you really don't need that one trim and you can switch it off and you see like, oh shit, that only, only changes 20 hours. Okay, uh, 20 months. Okay, yeah, that, that I can do. Uh, this number, by the, by the way, is not the months it takes to engineer, but rather for cars, you have to divide this number by six and for uh, engines you have to divide, to divide by four. This is not done yet. It will be done for you uh, in the UI once it's finished. All right, so same thing as this goes for, let's put this back to full, for the engines. So here we are in the engine engineering and you again have to assemble your team and you can see which engines are used in these three trims. So we have uh, the i6 version and an, a V8. And you can choose which ones to engineer. So if you put them all to full, then um, all of them will be engineered at once. And the synergies, even between families, will be taken into account. That saves you quite a bit of time. For example, this uh, V8 is 150 man months of engineering. And the total is 154, even though we are engineering others. So they seem to be pretty similar in their setup. And if we just turn this off, you can see, well, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, there are no limited production engines, of course, but they are still concept engines. And again, you have your reliability slider there. All right, I think that shows it pretty nicely. So let's take a look at topic number two and talk about the engineers and how they are built. All right. The engineers are not in the game yet, but um, they have been designed and fleshed out a bit. Uh, not the individual characters, but the general concept of them. And let's take a quick look at what they are. So basically, there are three type of types of engineers that are engine engineers, chassis and body engineers, and trim engineers. And the tabs they are responsible for, you can see here. So we have all the engine tabs for that. And for the chassis and body engineer, we have a chassis body aerodynamics, the suspension, the safety equipment, and fixtures. And for the trim engineer, we have the rest, the drivetrain, the wheels, brakes, interior and driver assist and entertainment. So um, that is an interesting split there. That means that you will have to have several engineers uh, of different types for your engineering projects and keep a good level in there to um, get a good result, especially if you're going for more high-end products where this really matters. All right, so um, how do engineers work? Well, they, ha they have 15 levels in total, at least that's what, what the current status of them is. They have 15 levels in total. They start at level zero, where they have 
Zero skills. Uh, they are just a plain engineer without any specialization. Let's take Heinrich Blumkraut, for example. He is a star engineer for the engine section. And he is a specialist in performance. So let's see what this means. Performance experts. If high cam, then plus free top end um, quality, so to say. So if he's engineering um, any car or any engine, I mean, then he will get a bonus to engineering time in the top end section if he is making a um, an engine which has a high cam selected and also he has a skill which is top end um, four as that's the plain skill so he is at level 10 so he has 10 skills in total 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 and um, at each level up he you can cho choose for him which one to improve Although you are only shown a selection of randomized skills out of these and the higher your existing skill, the lower the chance you will get the option to increase that skill which already has a high rank. And so you, ha you have your engineer, you put them in the slot and then these bonuses, uh, bonuses apply to the project. If he reaches level 10, he becomes a star engineer and a little diva. Little divas have problems with happiness. And they are... Yeah, they are rather choosy which projects they want to work on. Preferably, they will want to work on something that is really prestigious and new and exciting or really sporty. And not something that is, let's say, a basic city hatchback. So... At level 10, they get to choose one special skill for um, the engineering part. And that can be various things. For example, you could be a VVL expert, uh, which gets 30% off the engineering time if VVL is selected. And that is the top end engineering time. So this all makes sense. This is made such that they are important nuances, but not completely game-defining. So if you really want to, you could play without them or just uh, neglect them a bit. And you will still be doing reasonably well, but if you want to get the maximum out of it, then you will definitely need some engineers. For example, if you are making a um, carbon fiber chassis, then you would want to have... Uh, if you have played the game, the recent patch, then you will see that the carbon fiber engineering time is huge. And this expert level halves that time. So that can be a big factor. And there are in general really interesting things in here. For example, the traction expert, which um, reduces the very, at first very high engineering times for your traction control, ESP and launch control and lowers them quite significantly at um, the starting stages. Later on, if you have engineered those things often enough, they will drop in engineering time by themselves, so it's not that um, critical anymore. And yeah, I think that is all we have to say here, apart from Engineering is not the only thing your engineers do, and that is where there is a nice compromise mechanic built into the game, or not yet, but will be. And that is your engineers are also your researchers. If your engineers are researching, they can't engineer. If they are engineering, they can't research. Your engineers researching gives you tech pool, which allows you to get higher quality and... Um, for for the same price and it gets you ahead of the curve but if you engineer you get the existing things for much much cheaper and quicker so it really is a matter of balancing your research versus engineering um, and that should be pretty interesting and also your engineers gain more experience from engineering than from research so it is really a compromise you have to strike there for uh, advancing your company in the d direction you want. All right, but uh, that was long enough, and I think you 
you got a nice overview here. So um, let's call it that and hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time. And that will be after the holidays. We are back in office on the 4th of January.